What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits. It's everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And this week, it's the new iPhone A12 benchmarks, and the iPad Pro is getting an emojis. Uh-oh. Now, this is my new home right here on YouTube, so subscribe, hit that notification bell, ding, and I'll keep bringing you all the good stuff you want. Okay, let's get to the show, and the big story this week, a purported Geekbench 4 benchmark of the A12 processor for the new iPhone has revealed a 10% boost in speed, and the first iPhone ever to come with 4 gigs of RAM, up from 3 gigs on the iPhone 10. Again, I repeat, 4 gigs, finally, on an iPhone. Okay, hold on. Let me give you a moment to take that all in, and uh, here, um, you can clean yourself up now from drooling. The iPhone benchmark was identified as 11.2 with a single six core ARM processor and a single core score of 46.73 with a multi-core score of 10,912. Now that's a 10% increase for multi-core and a 7% increase for single core performance compared to the A11 if this is in fact the real deal. But this is really early and I'm honestly pretty confident after optimization and tweaking, it will be at least a thousand points higher when the final A12 drops. You look back and the A11 processor jumped up 1300 points from its early leak to its final version last year. Now this also features a metal score of 21691, which bests the iPhone X's metal score of 15234 and suggests we're also getting some major GPU improvements, which will really help with even more detailed and emojis. Oh yeah, and gaming and augmented reality too. Since 2015, the Plus phone in each generation has had the number 2 identifier. The 8 Plus was 10-2, so the benchmarks with iPhone 11-2 that we're seeing here is most likely the 6.5-inch iPhone 10 Plus, and at least that's the name people are calling it now. Now, we already know about the three iPhones expected to come out this year, and an earlier report from Ming-Chi Kuo claimed the two OLED screen iPhones would come with 4 gigs of RAM, while the middle 6.1-inch LCD-based iPhone will have 3 gigs of RAM. And yes, with this A12 chip, this will be the fastest iPhone Apple has ever made. And I guarantee Apple will say that multiple times when they officially announce it. All right, another iPhone rumor continues to get more momentum after a Chinese-based news outlet reports the new iPhones will also feature dual SIM cards. One will be an embedded Apple SIM in the iPhones with an additional SIM card slot and a tray located on the side. In China, where the Apple SIM is not available, it will offer an iPhone with two SIM card trays. The Apple SIM is already found in products like the iPad Pro. This could end up being a variant of the iPhone, one worldwide version with the Apple SIM, and a Chinese version with dual SIM trays. And it's a win for all of us if it allows us for easier switching, you know, between carriers and data plans. And if that happens, that's a good Apple. Yeah! Sticking with the iPad Pro, we've already told you about the new gesture support revealed in iOS 12's beta to bring new iPhone 10-like gestures to the new iPads this year. Now developer Steven Trout Smith, who is really the king of the betas, has found evidence of Avatar Kit ready to roll with future iPads. It's the software framework for your favorite Apple and emojis. Yay! It still requires a true depth camera like the iPhone 10s to do face tracking, which gives us some of the first real evidence beyond just speculation that the true depth camera and face ID authentication is coming to the iPad. Now this new iPad Pro is gonna be a lot like the iPhone 10, and Apple needs to have a consistent user experience across their product lines, at least if you're buying you know, the, the brand new stuff. This also lets me take a moment and just oogle over these concepts from designer Alvaro Pabesio. I'm sorry, but I'm just a sucker for this stuff, just like you. All right, the third betas for iOS 12 and macOS Mojave have been released, but the biggest change here comes from iOS 12 with an entirely revamped Maps app starting initially with the San Francisco Bay Area. Eddie Q talked to TechCrunch about how Apple is rebuilding the Maps app from the ground up by collecting all of its own data, allowing them to control it from a quality and privacy perspective. It's no longer this mishmash of information from different services that became one of its biggest disasters back in iOS 6. That was six years ago. Like, remember the melting bridges that look like noodles? Or if it was missing the Statue of Liberty on its debut, like, it was missing. Now, the new maps are more visually accurate by showing ground coverage, foliage, pools, and pedestrian walkways. You can actually see the difference here. 
Apple Maps vans are also collecting their own data, as well as 3D representations of the space around them. And the Big A, they are still big on privacy, which they remind us about at every chance. Maps will never record your starting point and ending point, but will anonymously take the data from the middle of your trip. They call it probe data sent from millions of iPhones to help them with traffic patterns and bringing really a more real-time aspect to the app. Or really only five people using Apple Maps right now. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, okay? Don't at me. There are honestly tons of people using Apple Maps. And in fact, I've learned this because they are very passionate about it too because you let me know constantly. So I will make a correction, fine. Six people using Apple Maps. But <laughs> I like their new approach. If it's really improved, the real test is to convince me to use Apple Maps when I'm in Yelp instead of copying it and then jumping out to use Google Maps. That would be a victory. So iOS 12 will feature the new maps for the San Francisco Bay Area starting with the third beta that's out. It will then cover all of Northern California by this fall and then roll out to the US over the next year. All right. Last week, I told you about Apple working on a potential all-in-one subscription service with Apple's own original TVs, shows, movies, Apple Music, news and digital magazines, and possibly more. So on my Twitter, at Brian Tong, I put up a poll to get an idea of how much you would pay for the service knowing what we know about it right now. Now, knowing that Apple Music for an individual already costs $9.99 a month, 40% of you said they'd be willing to pay 15 to 20 bucks for this new service, 9% said $25, 4% said $30, and the number one vote getter at 47% was, I don't even care. Yeah, Apple has some work to do, but I've gotta imagine this thing starts at 20 to 25 bucks at the lowest, and we'll see what other services they might bundle with it. There could be a lot more, but how much would you pay for this? Let me know in the comments. You, got, you guys and gals, just, just type, type away. And we end with a story that will have your hot line blinging or throwing up in your mouth, whatever you think. It don't matter to me. Drake's new album, Scorpion, and it's 25 tracks, which is really 10 or 12 too many if you've listened to it. Well, forget that. It racked up 170 million streams in its first 24 hours on Apple Music. That beats his previous record, of 89.9 million in 2017 for his mixtape More Life. Now that is impressive and congrats to Drizzy Drake because I'm more than one of those 170 million streams. All right, that's gonna do it for this week. If you wanna dig even deeper with Apple, you can check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast on Apple's podcast and really every app you can think of. And if you wanna help support me, you know I am independent. This is an all new journey for me. You can check it out at my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Brian Tom. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all next week. Be safe. Peace.